Hi, I'm Aaron from Disc Brakes Australia. Welcome to another DBA Tech Talk. Today, we're going to be teaching you the ideal way to fit a hat type rotor to the modern day motor vehicle. Okay, sometimes the wheel can be a little bit awkward to get off purely because we end up with a portion of um, rust forming around the, the ring of the hub. So we need to, to sort of jiggle the wheel sometimes to get it off. But once the wheel's removed, we can actually see the brake system sitting there with the rotor, the caliper, and this part in the centre is the hub area. Now we undo the caliper retaining bolts. There should be two retaining bolts for this style of caliper. Now to, to be able to clear the, the pads from the, the rotor, we just push gently against it and pull back just to give the pistons a little bit of movement and then remove the caliper from the disc rotor. We never hang a caliper on a brake hose, so we always use a hook and attach it off a solid part of the suspension rather than it hanging off the, the brake hose itself. Now it's exposed the disc so that it can be physically removed from the hub. This sometimes <coughs> takes a bit of work because as you can see, you get a rust scale forms inside the, the disc on the mounting face and also on the face of the hub. It's very important that this rust is removed before we refit a new disc to the vehicle. What we're going to do is use some, some coarse emery paper to get the bulk of the rust scale off. But first of all, we use like a WD-40 or an inox uh, material to, to just spray on there, just to lubricate while we clean, just give that a liberal coat. Be careful not to get it in onto the pads or anything like that. But then we just basically work our way around and remove as much of the rust scale as, as we can in a bulk way. Now we can use an oil stone or a sharpening stone as it's known. This is nice and flat, so it will keep the surface nice and flat while we go through and remove the, the rest of the rust scale. It is important to make sure that we get rid of all the rust scale. So the slightest bit that is left can actually result in the rotor being mounted with excessive run out. And this will, will cause us to have brake shutter in a very short period of time. So we work our way around and make sure that we clean every part of it. So we need to get every piece of the rust scale off so that we don't have the, the issue of the, the rotor being mounted with run out. It's very important that we work our way around and get close into the hub to make sure that there is no excess rust scale. We need to make sure we do around the stud area. The oil stone's handy because we can actually tip it on its side and clean around in between the hub spigot and the stud itself and get that area nice and clean. Any rust scale or debris that is left on the face of the hub will mount the disc with excessive run out. This excessive run out will cause the disc to tap between the pads as it rotates around and each time it taps against the pad at the high spot it'll slowly wear away the high spot so you end up with what we refer to as DTV or disc thickness variation. This disc thickness variation is what actually gives you pedal pulsation and steering wheel shutter under brakes. And depending on how much run out the disc is mounted with will determine how quickly this brake shutter will occur. It only takes a very small amount at this level um, of the, the disc to, and the hub to cause a major issue at the outer edge of the disc. So now we can remove the the rusty fluid that's been lubricating it as we clean and we can actually see how well we've cleaned the hub. Now it's obvious you can see with the parts that we have missed which need to be cleaned up still. It's very important that we get, remove all of these rough areas but also we'll now be able to get through and, and focus on cleaning the spigot as well so that the disc will sit properly and locate correctly. Now we can see that we've managed to clean away this rust scale area 
and get it nice and clean. You know it's clean enough when you can actually see the machining marks on the face of the hub. Most disc rotors that operate on this style of, of hub use the centre spigot hole to locate the disc correctly and centralise the disc. It's important now that we've cleaned the, the face that's going to control the run-out side of things, we also need to clean the spigot so that the disc doesn't end up sitting unevenly on the spigot and causing uneven pressure on the disc rotor. Once again, we'll just spray a little bit more of our WD. We use some fine grained emery paper and we work our way around the spigot. It's very important that we get this spigot area clean because if there's a build up of rust scale on this spigot it can cause the disc when you first fit it up to actually sit away from the, the hub face which now when you actually push it on it tries to flare the hole out. If we don't clean this, this spigot area properly it actually tries to, to bend the disc and bow the hole out so that it will fit on. This naturally puts notable stress through that hat area of the disc which results in often cracks through the centre hole. The only thing we need to do now though is actually check what the run out is in the hub before we fit the disc. This will enable us to help indexing the, the disc rotor when it needs to be done. Mm -hmm.